Thank you, Desi Hoppers, for that extraordinary opening to the 2019 Skoll World Forum on Social Entrepreneurship. For those of you who are attending the Skoll World Forum for the first time, welcome to Magical Oxford. And yes, a little bit of rain is part of the magic, so just embrace it, it's not gonna go away. You're all in for something special this week. This year's forum is our most globally representative yet. Our 1,200 delegates hail from 81 countries around the world. This includes 75 Skoll World Forum fellows, accomplished social and environmental change leaders from 34 much sunnier countries who are joining us for the first time. To those of you who have been to the Skoll World Forum before, welcome back. It's wonderful to see your smiling faces. Peter and I are humbled to have the honor of raising the curtain tonight. But you may be wondering, where is that smooth-voiced, silver-haired, warm-hearted British bloke who has so graciously welcomed us from this stage for so many years? Where is Stefan Chambers? <laughs> has he made a Brexit? Too soon, Lindsay, too soon. <laughs> not to worry, not to worry. Stefan is right here in the front row, sitting alongside the fearless former CEO of the Skoll Foundation, Sally Osberg. <laughs> and we're really honored to welcome you both as you join the forum this year officially as delegates. If there was an award for most treasured delegate, it would surely be a tie between Stefan and Sally. Yeah. Thank you. Creation often begins in odd ways. Take the Skull World Forum, for example. Jeff Skull recently reminded me that the forum was hatched amongst friends our most treasured delegates included, on the back of a cocktail napkin at the Old Bank Hotel here in Oxford. Speaking of Jeff, he's incredibly sad that health has forced him to miss his second World Forum in a row. In his absence, I'm delighted to share some of Jeff's reflections in his own words about what this gathering means to him. In the Skull World Forum's humble beginnings, we invited about 250 social entrepreneurs to a three-day program here in Oxford. Much to our surprise, everyone came. <laughs> While their specialty and geographies, race, age, religions, and gender were mixed, they had two things in common, passion for their work and the sad belief that they were alone in what they did. The first forum was a little like Woodstock. People realized that they were not alone, that they had others with whom they would soon form a special bond, like finding long-lost family. Our hope was that we could support a community where social entrepreneurs would help each other. That's gone from 250 to 1,200 attendees, from a few events over at the Said Business School to now taking over much of the Oxford campus. My dear departed friend, Jake Eberts, wants to find a not-to-be-named global event as a lot of big shots who talk a lot but do very little, whereas the Skoll World Forum was all about the little shots who talk a lot less but do an incredible amount of very important work. Over the years, we've been proud to host both the big and little shots from President Carter and Malala to the young leaders of tomorrow. There have been marriages and baby carriages, a volcano and a fire, star musicians and late night tone deaf karaoke singers. <laughs> There's been fun and hard work and deep mutual respect. All of these things grew from a simple cocktail napkin at the old bank. The theme of the forum changes annually, but to me, it's always been about the finest and most dedicated people in the world doing their best to make the world better for others. 
On behalf of Jeff Skoll, the Skoll Foundation Board of Directors and team, and Oxford University, we are delighted to welcome you, the world's finest and most dedicated people, to a week of discoveries made and friendships formed. At this forum, we're celebrating the 15th anniversary of the Skoll Scholarship, a program that supports some of those little shots, promising and proven young social entrepreneurs to earn an Oxford MBA at Said Business School. And with the support of our global community, these scholars have gone on to create astonishing impact. Their social ventures are democratizing access to renewable energy for hundreds of thousands of families living off the grid, promoting financial inclusion for the unbanked, offering legal services to social change organizations across Latin America. And that's just a few of them. Imagine what the other 70 are doing. But most importantly, the Skoll Scholars have cultivated a really close-knit community to support one another. And as we celebrate the 15-year milestone this week, many of the scholars are here with us tonight. Please join me in giving them a round of applause. Our theme this year is Accelerating Possibility. Social entrepreneurship begins with a sense of a recognition of possibility, a way to overcome an obstacle, break a vicious cycle, expose an injustice. Accelerating possibility begins when we refuse to accept an unjust status quo. As we sit here today, we're moving at eye-popping speed, orbiting the sun at 67,000 miles per hour. Can you feel that? That's the energy we need to harness because we need to move even faster. We know now that we have less than 12 years to begin addressing the damage we've caused to our planet before the effects become irreversible. And meanwhile, around the world, millions of families are impatient to enjoy the peace, prosperity, and opportunity that some of us take for granted. Accelerating possibility happens when optimism meets urgency, when imagination encounters grit, and when ambition converges with humility. The 16-year-old climate activist Greta Thunberg has taken the world by storm with a brave call to meet climate change with system change. Yeah, clap for her. If solutions within this system are so hard to find, she says, maybe we need to change the system itself. Greta is speaking the language of the social entrepreneur. You see, social entrepreneurs treat the system not the symptoms. And when we summon the vision to look at entire systems, new possibilities emerge for entirely different and better futures. Buckminster Fuller once said, there's nothing in the caterpillar to tell you it's going to be a butterfly. Social entrepreneurs are in the business of building butterflies. One thing that gets in the way of accelerating possibility is doubt. Can I create this? Do I have the right solution? Can we beat the clock? Am I the right person for the job? I recently read a book called How to Fly a Horse by Kevin Ashton that sheds light on these questions as it explores the topics of invention, creation, and discovery. What I love most about this book is that it breaks down the myth that creation is a sacred re act reserved just for geniuses. Instead, it showcases the less dramatic but far more hopeful truth that anyone can create. Ashton says every object in our life, however old or new, however apparently humble or simple, holds the stories, thoughts, and courage of thousands of people, some living, some dead, the accumulation of 50,000 years. Our tools and our art are our humanity, our inheritance, and the everlasting legacy of our ancestors. The things we make are the speech of our stories, stories of triumph, courage, optimism, adaptation, and hope. Tales of not one person here 
or there, but of one people everywhere, written in a common language, not African, American, Asian, or European, but human. This week in Oxford, in this gorgeous theater and beyond, we will celebrate your new stories of triumph. We will listen to those who exhibit remarkable courage. On occasion, we'll adapt. But most of all, we will be bound together by a warm hug of optimism that a sustainable, peaceful, and prosperous world for all remains within our reach. If, oh, thank you. <laughs> if you are harboring any doubts, please suspend them. Your next creation could be a cocktail napkin away. I do my best work on cocktail napkins. <laughs> so how will you use this week to accelerate your sense of possibility? We'd like to highlight a few things that you won't want to miss. Tomorrow evening in this space is arguably the emotional highlight of the week as the winners of the 2019 Skoll Awards for Social Entrepreneurship grace the stage and share their powerful stories. Speaking of amazing stories, you won't want to miss the Thursday evening film screening of Participant Media's The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind, right here in this theater. Talk about a story of accelerating possibility. This year, the Forum will be spilling into the streets and colleges and pubs of Oxford like never before. There are over 50 ecosystem events happening all over the city. These are your events designed by you, addressing the issues that you care about most. We're grateful to all of the organizations that have stepped forward to lend your voices and make this our biggest forum yet. Accelerating possibility also means expanding opportunity, especially for rising generations. That's why we're thrilled about the Skoll Emerging Leaders Initiative, which this year has brought 15 young change makers from Africa, Asia, and the Middle East to Oxford. You can hear more from them Wednesday and Thursday in Story Studios. There's sure, certainly no shortage of things to do, and if you're like me, you're probably experiencing a little FOMO. But make sure, most importantly, to expect the unexpected. Your most important conversation this week may well happen with someone you had no intention of meeting. And that's what makes this community so special. So just be sure to strike up some unlikely conversations and be open to serendipity. Before we move on to tonight's program, let's return one last time to how to fly a horse. Ashton closes with a reminder that feels just right as we begin. All stories of creators tell the same truths, that creating is extraordinary, but creators are human. That everything right with us can fix anything wrong with us. And that progress is not an inevitable consequence, but an individual choice. Necessity is not the mother of invention. You are 